In our last two lectures, we have discussed that microfluidic waste cell culture system, how to develop and how to do the cell culture. Now we are coming, how we shall go different types of biological readouts in this microfluidic platform. So, in this microfluidic platform, we have to use the techniques which are compatible to bio micro to microfluidic platform. Like say, this may be physical process or may be chemical. In the physical process, we have different types of probes like say cantilever, lasers and electrodes. And mode of the experiment, in case of cantilever, it may be micro electromechanical in case of laser it will be optical, in case of electrodes it will be electrical and materials used for that cantilever waste, silicon and other derivatives, optical, optical tweezers and for electrical we can use gold and platinum electrodes. Assay system may be molecular vibration, mass, surface charge, rigidity in case of cantilever waste, trapping force measurement in case of lasers, electrical impedance specifically for that electrodes. And chemical probes maximum or you can tell that major chemical probes are fluorophores. And fluorophores mode is the intensity, lifetime and diffusion time. You have a different types of fluorophores that shall be coming next, next to next slides. Then it can be used for assay of different biological readouts. Other chemicals way is that radio tracers, colorometric and colorometric method mainly used in macro scale uh, biological assay, but that can be also adopted in your microfluidic system. In the microfluidic system bioassay largely depend upon that microscopy based. Why microscopy based? Because we are using that PDMS based materials which is optically transparent for that construction of microfluidic chips or microfluidic platform. And particularly fluorescent based microscopy method which has high precision and high accuracy which can be used both for qualitative and quantitative analysis. That is why that confocal laser microscopy system is very, very used or very, very useful for bioassay system development in the microfluidic platform. So, fluorescent based microscopy is that why we sell fluorescent, fluorescent, we can use normal optical, but fluorescent based microscopy method is to visualize the dynamics of biological function in tissues, cells, organelles, macromolecular assembly and disassembly, biochemical and biophysical microenvironment at subcellular uh, location of the cells. So, what are the approaches we shall be doing? Initially, it was developed in that way, say cells are fixed, then permeabilized for the different fluorescent small molecules or fluorescent molecules are tagged with antibodies, nucleic acids and small molecules are targeted to different organelles or molecular assemblies like say actin filament etcetera. On the other hand, say fluorescent based system can be approached or can be done in living cell imaging means live cell imaging using time lapse microscopy method. Say that can be done using non-toxic fluorescent dye adopting biocompatible permeabilization method for fluorescent tagged antibodies nucleic acid. And nowadays your green fluorescent proteins are fused with your target proteins means genetically then expressed in that host cell and these GFP or its mutants can produce different type of fluorescence color inside the cell. You have not to use that fluorescent small molecules from outside, it is generated inside the cell. So, you can do live cell imaging using that GFP based method that can be done by using cloning or recombinant ways. So, what are the 
fluorescent probes basically. Fluorescent probes has typical property, it is it has that property to absorb light at high frequency and emits the light wave at low frequency means longer wavelength means it has a excitation spectra and emission spectra. Like say in that figure that fluorescent probe shows that excitation maxima around say 540 nanometer and emission spectra means it emits the light at the visible range it is around say 640 nanometer. So, that shift is called stoke shift. That fluorophores that fluorophores used for labeling that labeling and assaying for that proteins, nucleic acid and lipids and organelles like say mitochondria, lysosome, nucleus, membranes. We can assay that cell viability, apoptosis, autophagy, then for signaling purposes calcium quantification or calcium ion transport, then expression of green fluorescent proteins and its different mutants inside the cell. Means that different types of fluorescent probes are developed are also being developed to target the specific organelles, specific molecular events, specific biological events either live cell imaging or you fix the cell you can do it. So, what type of microscopy we shall be using for that purpose for that microfluidic system. So, first we are discussing that wide field fluorescent microscopy that what are the components present that light source this is that light source light source. This light source is a high pressure short arc mercury lamp. It, it gives the excitation in green, violet and UV range relatively weak blue. Then is coming the filter cube. Filter cube consists of that is your excitation filter, the dichroic mirror, then it is a barrier filter. That excitation filter, its function is to eliminate that maximum that radiations except that which wavelength it will permit like say here that excitation filter is 450 to 490 nanometer, but along with some other rays will go also. So, this ray will fall on that your dichroic mirror. What is the function of dichroic mirror? Dichroic mirror has a function that it can reflect that adsorbed light or means you can it can reflect that high frequency light at 90 degree, but transmit that longer wavelength light directly. So, by this dichroic mirror that excitation rays reflect at 90 degree pass through objective lens and falls to that specimen and which is already fluorescently tagged. Now, that specimen will emit that emission ray with longer wavelength that, that will directly pass through the dichroic mirror to barrier filter. What is the function of barrier filter? Barrier filter acts as a barrier means it will eliminate that some scattered ray and it will allow that maximum that emitted ray here that 550 nanometer low pass barrier filter means it allows maximally allows that 550 nanometer that emission ray. And then that detection system, detection system might be a photomultipliers, photodiodes, solid state charged coupled device or CCD for sensitivity and speed, speedy image acquisition system. Now, what is the light path in that microscopy system? Light path is excitation light is filtered by an excitation filter which allows only to narrow band wavelength to enter. The dichroic mirror reflects the light allowing to pass through that lens 
onto the specimen. The light emitted by the sample returns via the same path and transmitted by the dichroic mirror and it is going to the through barrier filter is going to the detector. So, this is that basic wide, wide field fluorescence microscopy, but it has a lot of drawbacks. Means what are the disadvantage of wide field optical fluorescence microscope? That majority of the cell volume means around say 90 percent is out of focus. Out of focus means that plane of focus along with its above and below that lights are coming out or scatter lights are coming through that barrier filter to that is your sensors. That when the thickness of the specimen is around 5 to 15 micrometer thick then that problem is escalated. And what do you mean by the thickness of the imaging plane? Thickness of the imaging plane in general it is around 300 nanometer for a, for a high numerical aperture around say 1.3. Second point is that contrast in the image adversely affected by the scattered light from fluorescent emission from the specimen. So, as I discussed just now that emitted light and or that which absorbed lights are scattered in the different planes of that specimens. So, there is no filtering method is here. So, all the rays goes out through the barrier filter to that detecting system. So, fine details of the image is lost. So, you will be getting so this is an example this is wide field microscopy here that on epithelial cell is labeled with that DAPI for nucleus that a mitotecar for mitochondria and that elixir for ATT for actin filaments. So, this is a image captured by wide field microscope and as because that here epithelial cells their thickness is very small around say 3 micrometer, but if the specimen is say 5 to 15 micrometer you will be getting a very hazy picture, hazy image. In contrast, if we use confocal microscopy, we have several advantage, control depth of the field, eliminate or reduce the background information away from the focal plane that is above and below the focal plane and image collection by serial optical sectioning from the thick specimen. Enhancement of the image resolution to some extent due to that pinhole things which will be coming. And at a stage we can use 3 to 6 different color fluorochrome could be used routinely for cell biology experiment. So, here is that same picture of that cell epithelial cell when you are doing confocal microscopy you will be get, get we shall be getting that very sharp image of nucleus mitochondria and an actin filaments. In that picture you are not showing that mitochondria here we are seeing mitochondria this is the actin filaments and the membrane parts. So, what are the essential parts in scanning laser uh, confocal microscopy? What do you mean by the confocal? Confocal means the plane of focus within the specimen and the detector pinhole are all situated at conjugate focal planes. What are the light source? Here the light source are mainly lasers different types of lasers are used. Some examples are say argon ion 480 nanometer, 540 nanometer, helium neon 543, 594 nanometer, titanium sapphire 395, 790 nanometer, etcetera. You can use other lasers also used for particular wavelength. Filter cube configuration is same as that of wide field microscope in general, but there are lot of sophistication are available nowadays. Then oscillating mirror this is that oscillating mirror. What its function? Oscillate around the perpendicular axis and scan through the focal plane point by point or pixel by pixel you can tell that. And most important part is your confocal pinhole which is absent in wide field microscope system. What the function of confocal pinhole? Situated in front of the image plane which acts as a special filter and allow only the 
in focus portion of the light means here we are showing that. So, this is say focal plane. So, that pinhole through this pinhole that is only that focal plane lights are going away, but which are above and which are above and below those emission rays are blocked or cut off by that pinhole. So, pinhole is very important and it is the most important part in the confocal microscope. And detection system, detection system here it is very high end it can detect say 10 to 14 photons at least. So, high sensitivity photon detectors are respond very quickly with high level sensitivity mainly PMTs are used for each type of wavelength or each type of visible light you have to use each type of PMT. So, what is the light path? So, light path here more or less same like your wide field microscope except that the pinhole it captures the light only that plane of that focus not that above and below the plane of the focus. So, here that light source is laser it is passes through that your filter then dichroic mirror reflect the lights then passes through objective lens then falls in the focal plane of the specimen. Then that emitted ray passes through that dichroic mirror that only focal plane which focal plane is present that is permitted by that confocal pinhole and other rays above and below they are blocked or cut off then the detector will take care of that on the things. So, what is optical sectioning in that uh, confocal microscopy? In a focal plane in x y focal plane that all the points means say it is uh, representing by single optical slice within the thickness of tissue may consist of 5 12 lines each comprised of 15 12 points means 5 1 2 into 5 1 2 that is 2 6 2 1 4 4 points overall which are represented by the digitized pixel means that scan mirror scan in the x y plane in that pixel by pixel this is the lines and this this is figure of 512 by 512 you can increase this lines to increase the pixel density. So, this is scanned by one x y plane to go to next x y plane by stepping motor it can be done by increasing 25 nanometer to 50 nanometer again it will allowed to scan in the x y plane. So, in that way that z axis all the x y plane are captured and this is called optical sectioning because you are optically sectioned that specimen in that way and you stack in z axis. So, that that step size generally 25 to 50 nanometer you can vary it depending upon your need. If you want to quick scan it you can increase the step size because biological samples if we if we use more time then there is chance of bleaching. So, according to the need you can uh, increase or decrease the step size. So, how z stacks will be done to get the full image of that object or specimen? So, this is generally done by that deconvolution of microscopy data to remove the out of focus signal collected with each individual image and z stacks occurred so the confocal microscopy represent a very straightforward means to analyze that entirety of the samples means we can get very sharp image no blurringness you can accord that image very distinctly and due to the pinhole of that uh, confocal microscopy that its sensitivity a uh, little bit increased with respect of wide field microscopy. So, as you are telling the resolution, so what is resolution image resolution in microscopy? So, optical resolution in theoretical 
format then we'll, we are discussing mainly that lateral xy plane optical resolution in wide field microscopy this is represented by that r xy equal to 0.61 into lambda by numerical aperture so lambda is the wavelength which wavelength you are using and that numerical aperture is n into sin alpha n is that refractive index of the media for ar it is one and we can use that uh, oil immersion where the refractive index will be increasing and that alpha alpha is the half of the angular aperture means this is the angle this is the full angle this is the half of the angular aperture it is the alpha sine of that angle is sin alpha so that is why the numerical aperture is n into sin alpha it depends upon that which type of objective we are using and what is the media it it may be air it may be oil if it is oil then refractive index is increasing so you can get more microscopic image resolution as a rule of thumb that what wavelength you are using for microscopy system its half will be its half length will be its image resolution that is you are telling that as a rule of thumb the absolute maximum optical resolution one can achieve is half the wavelength of the excited sunlight like say 229 to 370 370 nanometer for laser lines if we use that 4580 to 630 633 nanometer but in confocal microscopy due to its spin hole that image resolution to some extent increased so that is why instead of 0.461 that factor is used 0.40 so resolution rx y in confocal microscopy 0.40 into lambda by numerical aperture if you use 40x objective with numerical aperture 1.25 oil immersion we have a theoretical resolution is 156.2 nanometer or 488 nanometer you can calculate 0.40 into 0.48 nanometer by 1.25 equal to 1.56 nanometer we shall be coming this figure again so as we mentioned that confocal microscopy we are scanning the image in xy plane then by stepping motor increasing that 20 to 50 nanometer then again you scan you are stacking that z axis uh, uh, that all that your planes means image planes so how you are scanning and what will the scanning density the scanning format determines how many lines are scanned and how many samples are taken along each scan line the scan format is expressed in the form of number of pixel per line into lines per frame like say if a scan format is 512 into 512 means that sample area is scanned at a resolution of 512 into 512 pixels for a given microscope the size of scan field in xy dimension in our image depends on the objective magnification and the zoom factor so rule of thumb is that field of view means in the microns is 15000 divided by the magnification of the objective say so as for example if we use 40x magnification that field view will be 375 micrometer into 375 micrometer area so in that way you can calculate for 10x objective 20x to 100x objective and you can see that as increasing the objective that field of view is decreasing say from 10x 1500 by 1500 and for 100x is 150 to 150 micrometer now in that objective plane if we use say 64 edge to 64 scanning then each pixel dimension it will be around say uh, Five point eight six, five point eight six, and if we choose the scan format of five one two into five one two, the pixel size will be reduced to point seven three micrometer. Means, 
say like say in 40 x objective scanned area is or scanned field view is 375 into 375 micrometer. In that situation if you use 64 into 64 scan then each pixel dimension will be 5.86 micrometer and if you use 512 into 512 each pixel dimension will be reduced to 0.73 micrometer. So, you can see that image here when 64 into 64 you will be getting that little bit blurred image, but same magnification if you use 512 into 512 uh, scanning then you will be getting very sharp image. Then we are coming that zoom factor. How zoom factor will play the role? Zooming is will reduce the scan angle scan angle which in turn reduces the size of the scanned area. The scan format is unchanged and one can now scan a smaller area of the sample with the same number of pixels that was used before therefore, pixel size is reduced. Like say we are taking the same example of 40 x 125 1.25 numerical aperture objective at zoom 1 and zoom 10. So, in that example if you have scan format is 64 into 64 at zoom 1 that pixel size in nanometer is 5860 and when you use zoom 10 it is reduced by factor of 10 586. And if you use 512 into 512 that pixel size in the zoom 1 is 732 nanometer and pixel size is 10 nanometer. In that way say this is represented by that zoom factor x y image dimension and pixel size. So, zoom factor is 1 x y image dimension 375 micrometer and your pixel size is 732 whereas, if your zoom factor is 32 then x y image 11.72 micrometer and pixel size is decreased to 22.9. 9 micrometer, but in that way how much we can go means what is the limit can we uh, decrease the pixel size beyond that optical limit no it is not possible. So, limitation is that your objective lens power not that by simple mathematical form mathematical calculation you increase the pixel size and get that. Uh, decreased pixel size and magnify the image. So, there is a limitation. So, that is why the image is magnified to a greater extent and resolution is improved. However, improvement of the resolution is limited by optical resolution objective lens not by simple by mathematical calculation increasing the pixel density. So, that can be explained by that Nyquist theorem of sampling. What it states? It states that sampling frequency must be greater than twice the bandwidth of the input signal to reconstruct that original input from the sample data. So, what does this mean for scan format and pixel size? The pixel size should be set to about one half to one third of the minimum spacing that we want to resolve. So, like say in our example of 40 s objective the objective has a theoretical resolution 156 nanometer already we have calculated. To make full use of this resolution what will be the pixel size. So, if we use pixel size x y plane divided by 2.5 it will be 156 nanometer by 2.5 means it is 62.4 nanometer. To obtain 62.4 nanometer pixel size what will be that your scanning format that is the main question. So, at a scan format of 512 into 512 and zoom 1 the pixel size will be 730 nanometer. So, it is far away from that 62.4 nanometer which is achievable. So, this pixel size is therefore, too big to make full use of the resolving power of that 40 s objective. So, what you have to do? You can use the zoom factor of 12 x with the 512 and 512 format it will reduce the pixel size into 61 nanometer. So, keeping in mind that objective lens and you change that that zoom factor then you can achieve that maximum your resolution power of that 
objective. So, what could also change the scan format of 4096, 4096, then zoom on you can get 91 nanometer. So, question here is whether you need 60 nanometer resolution or are we trying to resolve details in your sample that small? Is it necessary? Because scanning an image of 400 hertz and 4096 format resolution will take 10 second and this makes a problem of photo bleaching and movement to your leaf cell preparation and may create a new problem. So, that is a problem of biological samples. You cannot go beyond certain limit. So, take home lesson is that to achieve the highest optical resolution of your sample that you need for the job by selecting proper objective means right objective, proper scan format and zoom factor for your sample. All these things you have to means know what you want to get that resolution using that confocal laser scanning microscopy and match the scan format to the desired output resolution. So, this is more or less about that fluorescent based microscopy system because this system we shall be using to assay that different biological readouts like say cell growth, apoptosis, uh, cell signaling for calcium imaging, then autophagy, traction force microscopy, then fluorescent recovery after photo bleaching type of experiment with respect of different flow rate in fluidic platform. So, in the next lecture, I shall go through that what are the experimental setup fluidic platform using that confocal microscopy to assay that mentioned that all the biochemical redoubts using live cell imaging method means we are mainly assaying through around say 3 to 4 minutes or 5 minutes for the experiment. Thank you.